Hello everyone. Today I am going to give the introduction to the VLSI that is very large scale integration. So before going into the introduction, so we have to know uh, who invented the transistor and who invented the first IC and at the same time who invented the mass transistor. After that what happened, how the transformation will take in place from small scale integration to large scale integration like that we, are, we have to know. Okay, so here further the first transistor was invented in 1947 by William B. Shockley and Walter H. Patton and John Batten at Bell Laboratories. So after that the mass transistor was invented by Mohammed M. Attila and Dan Kang in 1959. So after this uh, uh, the first IC was made by Jack Kelby in July 1958 uh, with germanium material in Texas Instruments. Okay, so now uh, after that Robert Noisy invents the first true monolithic IC by using the silicon and connected with the copper lines from the phase cell semiconductors. Okay, these are the scientists uh, who invented the transistor that is bipolar junction transistor and after that uh, the mass transistor, after that uh, the IC uh, that was invented in 1958. Okay, so after the invention of this transistor, bipolar junction transistor by uh, William Shockley and John Bratton and uh, John Bartin at Bell Laboratory, after that the IC was made by Jack Kelby in July 1958 with germanium material. Okay, so after that uh, uh, the mass transistor was invented by Mohammed M. Attila and uh, Don Kong in the uh, 1959. Okay, so after invention of uh, that mass transistor, the IC technology has grown very rapidly. That means what? Uh, because of its size and all those things, the trans uh, uh, transistor size will be reduced. So automatically, uh, we can have more number of transistors. So before that, uh, after that, uh, uh, the first IC was made by Chan Kelby with germanium material. And after that, Robert Noisy invented the first true monolithic IC with the silicon material and the interconnections on the IC was done by using the copper material. Okay, but what is IC here? What is IC? So, what is IC means here? Integrated circuit. Integrated circuit. So, what is integration generally? We will consider as summation. Okay, similarly here, the integration means Integrated circuit. Integration means placing of more number of uh, transistors on a single silicon material. Okay, so it is called as what? The integrated circuit. Integrated circuit can be defined as placing of more number of uh, uh, transistors on a single silicon area or single silicon wafer is called as what? Integrated circuits. So that integrated circuit was first invented by Jack Kelby with the germanium material and next uh, Robert Noisy uh, by using the silicon material. Now after that how this transformation, how this uh, size of the transistor will be reduced year by year that is nothing but given by technology roadmap here. Okay. So here I am giving that year and the technology in nanometers. So it is nothing but future size of the transistor we will consider as the technology name. So here technology that is you are measuring here in nanometer. Okay. So in 1999 what is the future size or the transistor size technology he is nothing but 180 nanometer technology we have used. After that it is goes on to the 130 in 2002, in 2005 it is 100 and in 2008 it is 70 nanometers and in 2011 it is 50 and in 2014 35, in 2016 that is 20 and in 2019 it is comes to uh, 7 nanometers uh, technology we are using after that in 2021 so the research is going on on 5 nanometer technology uh, that is like this here as we go on with from 1999 to now 2021 gradually the uh, size of the or uh, the future size of the transistor is reduced or the technology size will be reduced here that is from 99 it is 180 and it goes on to the 5 nanometers where it is and how the transformation of this uh, size of the uh, transistor will be taken place from 99 to this uh, 
ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन is taken place from 99 to 2001 in terms of uh, the feature size or the technology that is 180 nanometer technology to 5 nanometer technology okay so this is about the road map to the ic technology and now i am going to explain about what is the classification of ic okay so ic is nothing but what the placing of more number of uh, transistors on a single chip uh, single silicon wafer or silicon area okay so that is what uh, uh, ic and here we are having the classification of uh, ics okay so here the classification of ic that is integrated circuit uh, uh, here is based on uh, four types we have that is nothing but scales of integration that is small scale integration we have is small scale integration small scale integration and medium scale integration and large scale integration and what is small scale integration what is medium scale integration and what is large scale integration how many transistors uh, that are placed uh, on the silicon wafer we will see after this classification so here depending on ics will be classified depending on this uh, scales of integration that is ssi that is small scale integration here medium scale integration medium scale integration and next we have what large scale integration and next we have very large scale integration our topic is this one here very large scale integration that is uh, after that ultra large scale integration and after that we have giga or giant scale integration and next we have is wafer scale integration like that we have many uh, next 3d ic is also there and uh, 3d ic is also there and soc silicon that is system on chip uh, uh, ic is also we have here that is uh, these are the different classification that is uh, the first one classification is based on scales of integration scales of integration means how many transistors we are placing on each wafer or silicon material okay so that depends that the uh, number of transistor that the size of the uh, chip will be depends depending on the size of the chip we have small scale uh, next one medium scale large scale and very large scale ultra large scale and uh, giant or giga scale integration and next we have wafer scale integration and we have 3d ics and uh, we have sos okay like this it is depending on the size of the chip we have classified like this that is the scales of integration scales of integration we have this that means integration is how many number of transistors that will be placed on the uh, silicon area depending on that it is classified as ic is classified as like this okay so after that what we have is functionality okay so here we have uh, we have generally we have analog ics and digital ics that is the ics that will perform a function or operation uh, that is analog on analog signals and at the same time we have digital also so depending on the functioning or the operation of the ics we have classified here analog uh, ics are linear ics linear or analog ics next one is digital ics and we have the third one is mixed ics okay so this is the classification of ics based on its functionality functioning and at the same time also we called as uh, here which type it is that is linear or analog and another one is digital okay so next one is mixed mixing of this uh, analog and digital ics so it will perform if it is a mixed uh, ic that means it will perform both analog operations and at the same time digital operations on the signals so that is why here depending on the functioning 
we have classified the ICs as three types linear or analog and next one is digital and the third one is mixed signal so the next what we have is nothing but depending on the structure okay so how the IC will be presented uh, what is the structure of that IC we have uh, these types of ICs that is monolithic ICs and mass ICs metal oxide semiconductor ICs and next one is film ICs okay so it is monolithic ICs and mass ICs uh, and we have film ICs in this film ICs we have thin film and thick film ICs okay so next what we have is depending on the logic families so depending on the logic families means we have different logic families that is out of that uh, unipolar logic family and bipolar logic family bipolar means you can consider bipolar junction transistor that is the uh, main tran uh, transistor type what we are using in this bipolar uh, logic families that is uh, uh, we have ECL logic family okay so next one is what uh, for example is this one ECL is the example and next one is unipolar unipolar means here we have many that is uh, NMOS technology and NMOS ICs and PMOS ICs we have mixed that is CMOS and bi CMOS technology like that we have that is logic families that is unipolar and bipolar logic families like this we have the classification of ICs that is taken place okay so here after the invention of this uh, mass transistor that means nowadays uh, uh, the most widely used technology is nothing but the CMOS technology or mass technology we have so mass technology that means in all the integrated circuit nowadays uh, that is using is complementary metal oxide semiconductor technology we are going to use nowadays okay for high speed applications we are going to use by CMOS also that is the latest one okay so this is about uh, how these uh, ICs will be classified now after that uh, we will go with uh, scales of integration out of that we have small scale integration medium scale and large scale and our topic is here very large scale integration okay so now uh, we will go with uh, how these scales of integration will be uh, transformed for small scale to joint or giga scale integration and how many transistors will be placed on that and next one is how many uh, devices or gates will be placed on that we will see now now we will move on to the uh, Morse law here so what is Morse law well, Morse law is nothing but uh, it gives the relation or the relation between number of transistors on the silicon chip versus the years okay so that was proposed by the Gordon Moore okay so he is the co-founder of uh, Intel in 1960s okay so here the relationship between the number of transistors per chip versus the year has become the Moore's first law after the predictions made by the Gordon Moore to uh, Moore the co-founder of uh, the Intel in 1960s okay so because of his predictions how the how many number of transistors will be increased year by year on a chip will be predicted by this scientist that is Gordon Moore because of that it is called as Moore's law okay so after that nowadays uh, uh, the Moore's law will be according to Moore's law now the number of transistors per square inch of the chip will be double for every 18 months approximately now this is the Moore's law what we have here that is according to Moore's law now the number of transistors per square inch of uh, chip uh, will be uh, double for every 18 months approximately so this is about the Moore's law we have now we are going with uh, the depending on the scales of integration or the number of transistors that are present on the chip uh, we have classified different scales of integrations of IC okay so that is what here we have I have tabulated okay so depending on the scales of integration or the number of transistors on the chip we have different classification here that is what uh, uh, here I have given here and scales of integration and uh, next uh, the circuits for the chip how many circuits we are going to use for the chip 
Uh, next one is the number of transistors for the chip. Uh, next one is the products or devices we are producing or uh, at the time of by using these scales of integration. Okay, already I have introduced uh, these scales of integration in the classification of ICs that is small scale integration, medium scale integration, large scale integration and at the same time very large scale integration that is our actual topic we have here. Uh, in the coming classes we are going to discuss what is very large scale integration and what is fabrication and all those things we are going to discuss. Okay. Now, after that we have very large scale integration, ultra large scale integration, joint or giga large scale integration. Uh, next, uh, the latest one we have vapor scale integration and uh, system on chip and at the same time 3D ICs. So, like this it is classified here we have. Okay. So, in 1964 we have uh, the small scale integration that will be short form it will be represented with the SSI small scale integration that means what less number of uh, uh, transistors or the gates will be placed uh, on this uh, chip on this silicon area or uh, silicon wafers so that is called as what small scale integration that is represented with the SSI okay until 1967 it is continued that is small scale integration and how many circuits we can place is we can place less than 12 circuits Okay, below 12 we can place on the chip. Next what we have here, how many transistors we can place is 1 to 10 transistors. That means 1 to 10, that is below 10 number of transistors we can place on the chip at the time of the small scale, small scale integration. So that is what here we have. Uh, what are the devices we can form? That is planar devices, that is logic gates we can form. Uh, next one is flip flops. So, AND gate, OR gate, NAND gate, NOR gate and all those things we can form by using the small scale integration and at the same time we are, we are also having the flip flops that is the memory element. Okay. Next what we have here, the second one in 1967 this medium scale integration was proposed and this is called in short form as MSI. Okay. So, that is here we have on this one we can place 12 to 99 transistors uh, sorry, chips, uh, circuits on the single chip or silicon area. Okay, so this is 12 to 99. Okay, in between 12 to 99, we can place in this medium scale integration. So, how many transistors we can place is here, it is from 10 to 500 transistors we can place on the single chip. Okay, then what are the devices we can man made by using these transistors or these circuits we can have is uh, one of the products that can be produced is nothing but counters uh, next multiplexers and adders so these are the combinational uh, circuits what we have that is counters uh, multiplexers demultiplexers uh, next one is what adders okay so these thing that is off adder full adder all those things we can place by using or we can produce uh, by using this medium scale integration. So after that the next transformation is after 72 we have used this medium scale integration and after that we have the large scale integration. Okay, so in this large scale integration in short form it is called as LSI. On this one, in this one we are going to use or we are going to accommodate uh, how many how many transistors or how many chips on the uh, how many circuits on the chip is nothing but from 100 to 999 that is 999 uh, number of uh, circuits we can place on the chip and at the same time we have here 500 to 20,000 number of transistors we can place on this okay on a single chip 500 to 20,000 okay so if you consider or if you have uh, a transistor, transistor can be used as a an inverter circuit. Inverter we can form. After that we can form AND gate, OR gate like that. By using NAND gate, two NAND gates or two NOR gates we can form the flip flops here. Okay, like that here as we increases the number of transistors on the chip uh, on the silicon wafer what we have considered. Okay, so we can form more and more number of uh, transistors so that here if you observe 
as we go on with the, the small scale integration medium scale integration and large scale integration okay the size of the integrated circuits will be reduced okay how it will be we can see in the coming classes that is scaling of uh, transistor so that is here we have uh, in a large scale integration we can place the under to uh, 99 999 uh, circuits we can place uh, next we have here 500 to 20000 transistors we can place with those transistors with different connections we can form number of devices number of products so that is what here 500 to 20000 so that is formed the very important one is nothing but 8 bit microprocessor and read only memory and random access memory so these memory elements we can form and at the same time 8 bit processor we can form uh, on by using this large scale integration and the most and very very important uh, uh, integration scales of integration is very large scale integration till now the widely used uh, scales of integration is nothing but VLSI okay very large scale integration okay so here we have from uh, that is 10,000 to 99,999 number of circuits we can place on the chip and at the same time here we have 20,000 to 1 million number of transistors we can place on the chip in very large scale integration okay then what are the products we can produce by using this very large scale integration many products we are producing that is nothing but uh, 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 examples here is 16 comma 32 bit process okay so 16 bit comma 32 bit uh, microprocessor and many memory elements uh, we can place here that means uh, we have large memory elements we can make by using this very large scale integration okay so now we have what ultra large scale integration this one is uh, here we have uh, 1 lakh to 9 lakh uh, 99909 uh, number of circuits we can place uh, in this one and uh, next we have here 1 million to 100 million number of transistors we can place in this ultra large scale integration uh, in this one we are going to make special processors and at the same time uh, uh, virtual reality machines and uh, next one is smart sensors so like that we can make many number of uh, many number of products or devices by using this ultra large scale integration after that we have giant scale integration gsi in short form we call in this one we can use 100 million to and more number of transistor we can place okay so after that the technology 1996 uh, is nothing but vapor scale integration what is vapor scale integration means if you consider silicon wafer on that silicon wafer completely we can place uh, many number of circuits to, uh, and we can produce our required one and the speeder one uh, speeder circuits or speeder computers that is nothing but what uh, super chips we can produce super chips and next one is what uh, parallel super computers and we have fiber optic applications so what is the application main application of this wafer scale integration WSA is nothing but here in this one we can use the total completely to complete wafer is used to produce the IC or these devices that is nothing but uh, super super chips uh, next one we have parallel super computers and fiber optics applications okay uh, next we have what uh, the system on chip uh, that is as we see all the components uh, suppose if you require a uh, system or a computer so all the components uh, all the components you require for a system or computer will be placed on a silicon single silicon chip okay that is called as what uh, here we have system on chip okay so all the components required for a computer or system placed on a single chip okay so this is what here we have system on chip next one here we have is the final one that is uh, 3D ICs. 3D IC is nothing but uh, uh, two or more layers of active components uh, uh, placed both vertically and horizontally and 
it can be form a single circuit okay this is nothing but 3d ics so this is what how the scales of integration has classified or uh, uh, are transformed from uh, small scale integration to the large scale integration very large scale integration ultra large scale integration or giant large scale integration like that as we goes on from uh, from 1964 to now uh, there is a lot of change a lot of transformations taking place in the ic technology and at the same time nowadays the complementary mass technology that is cmos technology is widely used uh, uh, technology for the all the vlsi applications or present technology applica different applications okay so that is what here we have and here the classification and what are the devices we can produce by using this small scale integration medium scale integration large scale integration and very large scale integration and ultra large scale integration and giant scale integration and wafer scale integration and next one is system on chip and next one is 3d ics like this we have classified the scales of integration so out of that we are our topic is here this one we have very large scale integration okay so in the coming classes we are going to see what is the very large scale integration and uh, uh, next uh, what what we are going to study is nothing but what are the different mass technologies and what is the their electrical behaviors and all those things we are going to discuss in the coming classes okay so this is about uh, the mohr's law on scales of integration and at the same time the introduction to the vlsi here okay thank you